Hi, this video will outline in detail how to build your own DIY elevator at home. This type of elevator is great if you're tired of using your pull down ladders to get things up and down. And in my case, you're just getting a little older and things don't happen as easily as they used to. But who am I kidding? I would have loved to have one of these suckers when I was younger. First, I need to give a shout out to the Elevator YouTube channel. My elevator is much like his and I'll include a link to his video here. My video will differ in that I'll show you step-by-step -step instructions with pictures and measurements to get this done. I'm not sure how big his was, but in my case, this elevator is three feet by five feet and my barn ceiling is nine feet. A couple of key differences between what I'll show you is the framed body, no fall arresters, and a wireless remote to replace the corded one that comes with the hoist. As tested, I've thus far had a load of around 700 pounds on this one. The hoist is rated at 880 pounds. Test at your own risk. In the video description, I've included a complete list of parts needed to complete the build. My cost was just over $600. My wife and I completed the build in two days. With these instructions, you should be able to do it faster. So let's get started. After you've purchased all your parts, you need to cut a hole in your attic or loft. Remember that the 3x5 base platform will stick off the wall 3.5 inches before the platform begins. Plan for where the Unistruck guides will go. Measure a hole to be 3 feet 6 inches by 5 feet. I do this because you'll need a little bit of play for that hole when the elevator comes through. Set the saw blade to be just enough to penetrate the depth of the attic floor and then cut the hole. This will protect the joists. Mark a cut line on the joists away from the hole by the thickness of the joists. Then cut the joists to open up the hole. We now need to support the floor to the right and the left of the hole where we've removed the joists. Measure the distance from the wall joist to the next uncut joist. Using the sections of the joists you just cut out, measure them to fit, then secure them to the cut sections to form a bridge. Now we're going to mount the unistruts. Determine what needs to be done to get the unistruts to go into your attic. In my case, I had to get past a thick brick footer. So I built out from the studs with 2x10s and secured them to the existing studs. Drill holes every 12 to 16 inches along the length of the unistrut. Make sure the holes are big enough to fit a 2 inch deck screw. Do this for each unistrut. Now mount the unistruts. Using a level, take the first one and screw it into the stud support, making sure that it's perfectly perpendicularly level straight up and down. Mount the second strut the same way. It's critical that they both be perfectly level or the strut guides will bind. Place two 3 by 5 16 bolts in each strut trolley. A washer will not fit inside the trolley and you may have to widen the holes slightly using a drill to make sure that the 5 16 bolt goes through the holes. Place two strut trolleys with the bolts inside each unistrut. They will rest on the bottom. We will cut the other unistruts to go on top of the ones we just mounted later. Now let's build the platform. Cut two 2x4s to 59 inches. Take one of the 2x4s that will be the base of the frame closest to the wall and measure it to make sure that it's centered between the two unistruts. Mark and drill four mounting holes so the 5 16 bolts go through. Do not install the nuts yet. Cut four 2x4s to 32 and a half inches to be the depth of the frame. Making sure the frame is square, use two and a half inch deck screws and assemble the frame. Space the two middle pieces equally and screw them together. Loosely attach the frame base to the strut trolleys and mark approximately a quarter inch towards the outside of the unistruts. This will be the mounting location 
of the two upright supports. Cut two 2x4s to 37 inches. These are the two upright supports. This will be the height of your elevator platform. Remove the frame from the trolleys and attach the two upright supports to the frame using glue, two 3 inch 5 16 bolts, four washers, two nuts on each support. Make sure the uprights are perpendicularly level to the frame. Now let's build the upper portion of the platform. Cut one 2 by 6 56 and a half inches. This will be the top beam of the platform. Center it between the two unit struts and mark the holes for the trolley and upright support attachments. Attach the top beam to the upright supports using glue and two 3 inch by 5 16 bolts, four washers, and two nuts on each support. Secure the trolleys using washers and nuts. Measure the distance between your unit struts and cut a 2 by 6 one inch shorter than the distance. Center this 2 by 6 between the two unit struts and attach it to the back of the top beam using plenty of glue and two and a half inch deck screws from both the front and the back of the beam. This will add additional strength to the beam. Drill a half inch perpendicular hole in the center of the top beam attached to the trolleys for the eight inch eye bolt. Insert the eight inch eye bolt in the top and secure it using a washer and a nut. This eye bolt will hold over 3,000 pounds. Cut two two by four pieces five and a half inches long and attach to either outer end of the front of the top beam using glue and two and a half inch deck screws. Now let's build the side supports for the lower platform. Cut the eight foot aluminum strap in half. Lay a four foot section from the top outer left of the platform so that it lands on the lower inside of the frame base. Mark two spots at the top and two at the bottom to drill out and fit five sixteenths lag screws. Do this for the right side as well. Drill the four holes in each four foot section of the aluminum. Cut a three foot by five foot section of plywood for the base floor. Cut a three inch slit in the base to allow the aluminum strap to pass through. To do this, measure from the back of the base closest to the wall, 28 inches, and two inches in from the edge to bypass the two by four frame and cut the slit using a jigsaw, three inches long toward the front of the base furthest from the wall. The edge of the cut you just made should be approximately 31 inches from the wall. Dry fit the base onto the base frame and verify that the four foot aluminum side straps fit the way you expect, going through the base three by five. Attach the three foot by five foot base onto the frame using glue and two inch deck screws. Using the one and a half inch five sixteenths lag screws, attach each four foot aluminum strap to the platform. To attach the bottom leg screws, I used a couple of buckets to slide under the structure to lift it up just enough to get underneath. Each lag screw should hold over 220 pounds each, giving you 440 pounds of capacity per side on the platform. Now we're going to finish the top unistrut extensions. The top of the unistruts must be a few inches above the overall height of the elevator frame. Therefore, you will cut two pieces of unistrut to go on top of the current mounted unistrut to the height needed. Remembering that the elevator is 37 inches tall, the unistrut's final height should be at least 41 inches above the attic floor. Measure, cut, and secure the required unistruts on top of the existing unistruts using two inch deck screws and make sure that they are perpendicularly level with the other struts. Make sure there are no rough edges on the butted ends so that the trolleys will eventually slide seamlessly through the butted ends. Now let's build the hoist beam. The bottom edge of the hoist beam should be at least 29 inches above the top of the elevator to give ample spacing. If you had to build out your studs before attaching the unistruts like I did, you'll have to build out the studs before mounting the hoist beam. The hoist beam should be directly lined up with the top beam of the elevator before attaching to the eye bolt. Cut one two by six to be the hoist beam 
the length to span the distance of the 2x4 upright building framing and attach using glue and 2.5 inch deck screws. Cut another 2x6 hoist beam the exact length as the last. Using glue and 2.5 inch deck screws, attach this to the other hoist beam for added strength. Drill at least three 5 16 holes in the doubled hoist beam and use 3.5 inch 5 16 bolts, washers and nuts to additionally secure the two hoist beams together. Now let's install the hoist. Cut a section of unistrut at least 30 inches to mount to the bottom of the hoist beam. There are two hoist brackets that should come with your hoist. They will fit perfectly over the unistrut and slide freely. The unistrut will be mounted to the hoist beam using at least five two and a half inch deck screws, but you will need to add enough washers between the unistrut and the hoist beam at each screw to be the thickness of the two hoist brackets. Mark the center of the hoist beam. The hoist will be mounted offset so that the cable hangs directly center of the beam. Keep this in mind before securing the unistrut to the beam. Loosely attach the left side of the unistrut with a two and a half inch deck screw and required washers for spacing. Slide the hoist brackets over the unistrut and loosely attach the deck screws and washers to the right side. Attach the hoist to the hoist brackets using included hardware. Slide the hoist into position so the cable is directly center of the hoist beam. Add remaining two and a half inch deck screws and washers and tighten. Wrap the hoist beam at least four times in galvanized hanger strap, two on the right and two on the left of the hoist. Make sure that the strapping is tight as you can get it. Secure it using two inch deck screws. This is a minimum requirement as deck screw heads are only rated between 100 and 200 pounds each. Each wrap of the strapping is rated at 750 pounds each and makes an excellent backup. Attach the hoist cable to the elevator eye bolt. The hoist recommended here was the 440 880-pound unit. To get the 880-pound capacity, double the cable and use the additional included pulley. You should be ready to test the elevator. Keep tension on the hoist cable at all times to keep it from unraveling. At this time, do not put anything on the elevator platform. Make sure that the elevator doesn't bind at any point going up or down. Key areas to watch for are how smoothly the trolleys pass by the butted ends of the unistrut on each side. Also watch carefully and slowly as the elevator platform passes the hole in the attic floor. Remember that if the unistruts are not at the far ends of the right and left of the platform, the platform can shift or slightly tilt to the right or left. This is only about a quarter inch or so, but it does happen. The goal is to keep the elevator structure centered when it goes up and down, so keep any loads as centered as possible. At this point, test the elevator with a load. While I can say that my wife and I have safely ridden our elevator, I cannot, for liability purposes, recommend that any human does this. While every effort has been made to over-engineer for safety purposes, it is safe to say that most items on this design are well above the 880-pound capacity of the hoist. However, there are weak points don't test the limit of the hoist. This design does not include fall arresters. While expensive, they are recommended for additional protection of anything valuable. Now let's install the upper limit switch activator. The hoist comes with an upper limit switch that will cut off the hoist when the upper limit switch lever is pressed. Bring the elevator up to your attic or loft and make sure that the floor of the elevator is perfectly level with the loft floor. Push the hoist limit switch lever until you hear a click indicating that the switch is active. While it's at that point, measure the distance from the bottom of the top elevator beam to the limit switch lever. This might take two people. Cut a 2x4 that distance and attach it to the back of the top elevator beam with 2.5 inch deck screws. Test this mechanism by raising the elevator and holding the up switch until the 2x4 activates the limit switch. 
the hoist should automatically shut off and your floor should be perfectly level at that point with the loft. Now let's install the remote control. You'll probably find that the included cord, the up-down switch on the hoist is probably not long enough for use, especially if you're my wife's height. It either needs to be extended, which is easy, using a length of four strand 18 gauge cord. However, it's pretty easy to attach a wireless remote and it does add the cool factor. These instructions are specific to the use of this recommended remote. The remote must be AC capable, capable of being used with electricity, and capable of handling a 10 amp load. First, you need to make sure that the remote receiver is in momentary mode. It comes as toggled. Toggled means that you press a button to start or turn on, and the same button again to turn off or stop. I personally don't think this is safe pinch toes, etc, etc. Momentary means that the hoist will only operate so long as your thumb is pushing a button. So push to start and release to stop. To get this receiver in momentary mode, you'll have to remove the jumper completely from the circuit board. Remove the back of the receiver, which is four screws. Pull out the circuit board. Find the jumper and pull it out. Or just set it so it's only on one pin and then reassemble. Now, really importantly, unplug the hoist. Cut the hoist remote cord to the length needed to reach where you will mount the wireless receiver. Expose the four wires for attachment to the receiver. The four wires are black, white, blue, and red. Attach the blue and white together and attach them to the reverse. Attach the red to the forward. Attach the black to the L. I think this means the live wire. The only thing missing from the corded switch was the neutral. We need to get this from the power cord. So strip about a four inch section of the outer power cord where it can pass by the receiver. Be careful not to nick any of the three inner wires. Expose a section big enough, about a half an inch or so, of the white or the neutral and attach it to the N, neutral, on the receiver. Plug in the power to the hoist. This wireless unit comes with two receivers, which is super nice. Using this wiring, the up arrow should propel the elevator up and the down arrow down. Test it without anything on the elevator. I like to keep a remote on the elevator using Velcro or something like that. And I keep one available on a shelf downstairs for remote operation. I thought I'd include a little safety extra to demonstrate just how important it is to beef up every component possible. This is an example of some of the testing I've done so that you won't run into the same issues on your build. On the top was the best eye bolt I could find at Home Depot. I assumed it was strong enough, but later found out that it was only rated at 300 pounds in a super critical area of the build. This eye bolt finally bent with a load around 500 pounds. We found this out right after our initial build, pretty scary. It was then that we found the one on the bottom from Amazon, which had a 3,000 pound load capacity. The point is, don't cut corners. You can't imagine the things we've been able to get into our loft now that we don't have to depend on the pull down stairs. And as my wife and I aren't getting any younger, it's been a real blessing. Enjoy. <music>